In this video, I'm going to show you how to cut tile like this and like that. And we're going to get the other bathroom done. I have two bathrooms. I already did the one, as you can see. Yes, I am laying down on my bathroom floor. Um, yeah, let's get to it. So let's talk about the tools I used, which are pretty rudimentary. I don't really want to buy a big old crazy wet tile saw and all that kind of stuff. So I went plain and simple, which hopefully that's why you're watching this video. You want a plain and simple way of doing tile. Here you go. So obviously you need that cheap thing you find at the, the big box stores, tile cutter. Uh, they work fantastic if you use them right. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, this was like $30. Um, score the tile and then break it, whatever. Get one of these. I got a, I have a grinding uh, wheel, a, a grinder uh, from Harbor Freight, $12. These things last forever. I've had three or four of them. Uh, they're great. Anyway, with a diamond wheel. So this is like a steel wheel with a bunch of diamonds um, on the edge. And it just cuts tile really well. Speaking of cutting tile, I got a, my hole saw for my PEX connectors. This is an inch and a quarter. You could go smaller. This is a little bit big, but it makes, you know, so you don't have to be perfect with it. Again, diamond tipped uh, blade. You need gloves because tile is sharp when it's cut. You use a square to mark. And to mark, I actually use a ballpoint pen. Some tile this doesn't really work on but others you have to kind of push just right but you get this line that is very precise but also wipes off when you're done so you, you can mark up the tile uh, it just wipes right off because the tile usually comes with like a little film on it sharpie is no good because some tile stains uh, pencil doesn't show up they make special markers for tile but i don't know they're not very precise and you want to be precise when you're doing tile work Obviously a tape measure, uh, nothing fancy there. I always like to have a bucket with a sponge in it. And you can see this trick I used for my hole saw, because you want to cut tile wet. So I just cut a hole out of my sponge with a hole saw. Now I got my sponge in here. You just soak your sponge, drill away. And most importantly, you need your actual tile. So I'm using a 12 by 24, what they call large format, because it is large. It's uh, It looks like marble, it's not actual marble. It's a lot cheaper than marble. Uh, but it is porcelain, so it's a little bit better, more dense than ceramic. This will be on the floor, and this is gonna be a high traffic uh, bathrooms. And this is a rental, so I kind of just wanted something durable. Anti-slip as well, because it is in the bathroom. So, yeah, let's get to actually laying it. So what I'm going to do to start this bathroom, and what I did to start the other bathroom, is think about where you're going to see the tile, and focus on that portion. So. Don't start behind a toilet or behind a vanity or anything like that because you don't need nice looking full tiles there anyway. Um, so start with the entrance of the bathroom, the doorway, or maybe like the shower where you step out of the shower. Or if you have some feature in the bathroom, just focus it around that so the tile looks good around that. So this bathroom is very small. Backsplash. Maybe I didn't write it on the wall. Oh, here we go. This bathroom is 27 square feet. So really tiny. Not gonna take a whole lot of tiles. But I have a sliding door at the front. So I have a threshold that I need to keep in mind. And I have the shower curb, which should be pretty much square to the walls. I don't know if that's square. So I, I don't want to start my tile in that corner. Because if that corner is not square, 
I'm gonna get off and by the time I get to where the doorway is, the tiles might look a little crooked. So, for this bathroom, I'm gonna start by the threshold of the door. So you guys can see, here's my threshold of the doorway. There'll be a sliding door here, pocket, or a pocket door. And so I want to square my tile to this threshold. All right, one thing I did forget to mention is if you know your floor is not that level, um, that's okay. Everyone on the internet says, oh, you gotta level it perfectly. I'm, okay, not everyone, but lots of people say you gotta level it perfectly to get that perfect floor. Um, that's mostly true, but <laughs> no floor is absolutely level. And when you're remodeling old houses like I am, you just gotta deal with what you got. Um, this floor actually, surprisingly, is very level. I don't know how I got lucky with this section because you guys know in a previous video that shower, the floor there, I actually had to cut the whole floor out and re-level it because it was so unlevel, it was ridiculous. The shower wouldn't have drained at all. But if you don't have a level floor and you know, say it's cresting this way as you go through the room um, and you're doing a semi-large format or like what I'm doing large format, it's probably a good idea to pick something smaller, but if you want to go with this, then put the, the short end, the short direction of the tile. Make sure that goes with the arch of the floor so that the tile can more or less bend, not bend, the tile's not bending, but the, the whole tile system can bend around the um, slight bow in the floor. That way um, you're not getting a bunch of lipping on the tile. Just something to keep in mind. I had to keep that in mind downstairs in that bathroom because it's a little bit cupped, the floor. So I just ran in the direction it's cupped, I just ran the tile like this instead of like this. And you can just think of that as the smaller distance can, can compensate for a curved surface easier than the long distance. Okay, so you can see I've got all that I can in full tiles laid out and I went for centering it on this doorway and once I got that centered and kind of where I wanted to I set up the laser struck a line right on the edge of that tile just so I could put that one and that one in place and then after that I'm doing so it's kind of a brick pattern so this row to where it is this row is offset by a third of the tile and then the next row is the same as the first row so yeah, anyways, once you get all your full tiles laid out how you want and you're happy with it, then you can go to cutting um, the tiles. So one really important thing to keep in mind when you get your uh, full tiles laid out is make sure they're exactly where they're gonna be. So now that I have all the full ones in, I'm just gonna work my way around the room, do the easy cuts first, the straight ones on the scoring block, and then mark them. Uh, with a number and then mark the wall next to it so I know where they go so I don't get confused at the end. And then I'll save the hard cuts for last, the toilet flange and the drilling the holes for the water lines and the plumbing. And yeah, let's see how all that's done. So, what do you do when you have a tile right here and you got a toilet flange? So thankfully we don't have the toilet flange right in the middle of the tile like I did downstairs. Um, it's a little bit more challenging, but it's still challenging to get that nice cut. Um, and you don't have to get a super nice cut. The toilet will cover a big mistake. 
So this is how you do it. So I got this tile in place where I need it to be. I can roughly lay this down, take some of my spacers, something like that, and see what it looks like. So it looks like well, we're gonna have to take, take out this corner, which is totally fine with me. What we wanna do is get those an accurate marking point for that. So we need to mark and well, the most outside point of the toilet flange. So I'm actually gonna do something where you can't see what I'm doing. But I'm gonna pick the tile up like this, keep that spacer in there, put the tile up against the spacer, and then set the tile on the flange. And then I can take my marker and just put a little notch where the toilet flange starts. Now I want to do the same thing but on the other side and make sure you're marking where the outside, the, the most um, outside of that circle is. And so I need to pull it back a little bit, put a mark there. Now we can see where the outermost points are. So now we can just kind of mark a little bit of circular profile as we go. And it looks like this this one side is pretty much at the outside most of the flange, but this side isn't. So the flange will start here and dip down just a little bit before it comes up. So, now how do you get that into the circle you need to cut? Well, that's the next step. Now, one thing you're gonna want is a spare toilet flange. And so, my, mine actually, I had to raise it up so there's a shim under it that's slightly bigger than the toilet flange. So I'm gonna have to buffer my measurements a little bit. But, so you wanna just take your flange, kind of matching your marks, hold it down, obviously. There we go. Now we have our marks, so, now I have to do the hard part and actually cut it out. So let me show you how I do that. Okay, so you take your tile saw, diamond blade, on a grinder, and you see here's my mark. So basically what we're gonna be doing is going at an angle, kind of sharp angle, maybe 45-ish, digging in, starting our groove, and then kind of rotating it like this. And then that'll give us that perfect circle. So I have a bucket of water here with a sponge too that I'm just gonna douse it in every you know few seconds. And I got a piece of wood underneath so I don't chop into my bench and that'll soak up a little bit of water as we go too and keep everything cool and hopefully a little bit dust free. It's pretty cold out tonight, so I'm doing this inside. So here we go. So let's see how it fits. And just like that, got a nice tight toilet flange. And remember I did have to cut this a little bit wide just because the below the flange you can't really see it. There's a, there's a step out piece uh, that I didn't want to hit. But yeah, there you go. So that's definitely never going to be seen with the toilet on it. All right guys, for drilling the holes, it's exact same process. So you put your tile in, how it's gonna go. Put your shim in, smash your shim tight, take your marker and just mark. I do the center line of these since my hole saw is oversized by a little bit. I do that center line there. And then you want the center line this way. Put your shim back in there. And then mark your line. And then take your square and get wherever that is. So you got your two marks, your intersection points that you made. So you go ahead, take your square to your tile, 
Sorry, am I really loud right now? I'm like right next to the microphone. Sorry, I'm yelling at you guys. And you want to pinpoint that center line. You got your center line. You take your drill bit. And th this is just what I do. It's kind of a fabricator's way of doing this. So you just center line your drill bit and mine, I don't know if it's that, is that focusing? Mine has these little notches. So you can tell where the center of the, the drill bit is. And then you just kind of mark the eyeball outer edges of the drill. And the only reason you have to do this is because um, tile drill bits, they don't have a centering drill. Um, I've seen some that do, but I don't know about those ones. Um, so it makes it more complicated this way. So you gotta do that. And then you gotta do it the other way. And now we have the edges of our circle. So we can kind of just eyeball it, set the drill bit in there, get it centered. And th this is this is kind of redundant, is marking the circle again. But it keeps me centered when I drill. So now you want to start the hole sideways. So you don't you don't just want to go straight down and be perfect because it'll walk all over and you'll ruin your whole tile. So you gotta you gotta come in at an angle and start cutting like a moon shape. And then as you come in, then go vertical so it doesn't walk all over the place. So you'll, you'll see what that looks like right now. Soak it all up. And here we go. Okay, so you see I've made a moon shape now. And now that the drill bit's stable, I can kind of rotate vertical so that it cuts the hole straight. Get some more water. So now I have the circle started. So now you wanna, as you drill, you wanna rotate it slowly and don't push very hard. Cause you'll break the tile. Remember to get a bunch of water frequently. There we go. There you go. Now we have a really, really good hole. So I'll be back when I'm done. All right, so you can see I got everything cut. It's all ready to be put down. And the last thing I wanted to let you know is don't forget to label your tiles, the ones you cut, because some of them might look a lot like other ones and then you'll get confused. And if you put one down wrong, you're not gonna be happy. <laughs> so yeah, you can see here, I marked all around the wall. So this tile says 10, the wall says 10. You know, I got nine, nine, and then for these two right here for the toilet flange, I just uh, said which direction the shower is so I don't get those confused. Not like you really could. Those can't really go in wrong, but now I don't have to think about it. And if you don't have to think, you can go a lot faster. So yeah, here we go. Everything's all cut. I'm probably gonna lay this uh, maybe tomorrow or it, it doesn't matter. It's, not part of this video. Um, laying tile is, is a different thing than cutting and planning and um, getting ready to lay the tile. So yeah, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you gained a little bit of knowledge. And if you did and you like this style of video, yeah, subscribe for more. And yeah, hopefully I can bring some more videos to you. Some more useful videos on how to do this house stuff. 
And remember the big picture for me is um, I'm buying houses that need a lot of remodeling, putting a bunch of value into them and then renting them out and refinancing them to um, basically get the money to get the next one. So it's called the Burr Method. And if you don't know what that is, just look it up. B-R-R-R-R -R 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 method. That's a great method if you don't have a lot of money because you're putting all the value in. So you're basically, this is your job. You're working at adding value to a house instead of just willy-nilly buying property and renting it out and making them the money. Um, that requires a lot of capital. So yeah, if you want to see more videos about that, maybe I'll do a dedicated video on that because I've had a lot of people ask what is that and then it sounds cool and they're like oh how do you do that you know so maybe i'll do a video on that but yeah hopefully you enjoyed this video on how to lay out tile and cut um toilet flanges which is pretty difficult sometimes but yeah um if you use this technique or anything post in the comments uh, i'd like to see what you guys are doing okay see you next time